Alright, today I'm going to cover this uh, video by Alan Parr. He's got over a million subscribers. And I watched another video. And then I watched this one. And I wanted to pick out something to uh, make it real easy to, to learn something. And I'm telling you, I've never seen anybody be so wrong on every single point regarding the end time it's incredible it's like this guy has no understanding whatsoever and so I'm not gonna pick apart every point all I'm gonna do is focus on one point and so let me uh, have let let's have him have the first word here in regards to uh, what he's talking about look further into now, for you to understand these possible three reasons, which I'm going to talk about in just a moment, it is important for you to be able to understand the different groups of people that will be alive during the 1,000-year millennial reign of Christ here on earth. The first group of people are going to be people who have already been raptured. We have our glorified bodies. And as a result, we have been uh, in heaven, if you will, and now we're going to return from heaven to reign and rule with Christ on the earth in our glorified bodies. That I want you to think about that. Remember what he says. We go up to heaven, and then we come back down on the earth. Remember that. Don't forget. Are not able to decay. They're not going to die. They're not going to be able to procreate or reproduce or Aww. any of those things. We're going to be free from any and all effects of sin and temptation. We will be like Christ. Now, let's go ahead and read in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50 to 53. What uh, I'm saying uh, here, brother, Yeah, okay. So, the New Living Translation. It's as goofy as a comic book. I, I'm not kidding you. I'm not. You know these guys that read these corrupt versions they are so lacking it's unbelievable I don't believe these perversions so let's read here uh, in 1st Corinthians 15 and uh, let's start here uh, verse 50 now I, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Wow. Okay. So when I, when I compare these, it's, it's ridiculous. Okay. But let's continue. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as we know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Alright, now let's listen to Bozo the Clown. Brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to wow. live forever, and we who are live. Wow, is all I can say. I mean, the guy from even from his comic book version, he's he's saying it himself. The end of the world. 
living will also be transformed. Now here's the verse. For our dying bodies must, here's that word again, be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. So that's the first group of people that are going to be alive during the 1,000 year millennial reign. Alright, let's get stupid now. Here's where the confusion comes There in. we go. There's another group of people that are going to be on the earth during this time, and it's going to be the group that we refer to as Tribulation Saints. Boom. Okay, let's see. this is too much, really. Alright, first of all, we are not, we are in the, we are in this thousand years spoken of in Revelation 20. All right, it's not a millennial reign. That's not mentioned anywhere in the Bible. Now, what Bozo or I'm sorry, Alan is saying is that there after <laughs> after the end of the world, there's a thousand years coming. That's not in the Bible, but I want you to pay attention. He's saying that there's going to be people in their glorified bodies. All right, and they're not going to be having sex. I think that was a big point he was making there. But then also, group number two, the tribulation saints. So these will be apparently saved people, but not in their glorified bodies. So they're able to have sex, I think is what the point he's going to make. I don't know. but So... This right here is essentially saying Jesus Christ is a liar. I mean, he lied. All right, so we just read here in 1 Corinthians, you call Paul a liar too, call everybody a liar, why not? So, behold, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. I mean, it's like these guys are teaching a whole nother religion. Really. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just stupid. I don't think anybody's even reading the Bible. Are these guys that teach us goofy stuff here? I don't think they even... They might not even own a Bible. Really. Now, this is insanity. Jesus is asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? He's asked specifically. And I know that for me, this has been on my mind. What is the end of the world? And Jesus explains all these things that will happen. But then, at the end... The sun will be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, which is Jesus, in heaven, and sh then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Why? Because everybody's going to know. It's the end of the world. In Luke 21, he, he describes it as men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking upon those things which are coming upon the earth. People are going to freak out, man. They're going to freak out. People are going to have heart attacks. They're going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's going to be people mourning and just going nuts. Because there's going to be no doubt about it. It's the end of the world. And they shall see the sign of, <clears throat> excuse me, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. This is the end of the world. The great sound of the trumpet. Remember that. I'm going to have to hold this up just in case. But let's go to Matthew 13. And again, if it's not the end of the world, Jesus is lying. And Alan Parr is saying is right it's not the end of the world I mean, it's, it's just so weird nonsensical doesn't make any sense at all the, and now Jesus talks about the parable about this parable in Matthew 13 where the harvest is the end of the world all right so you got the wheat which is the saved and you got the tares which are the unsaved. 
So at the end of the world, the wheat is gathered, and the they are stored in God's barn. Okay, that's not hard to understand, is it? But the tares are gathered, and they are gathered in bundles and burned. I, you know, I think somebody that actually farms understands this uh, pretty good. <laughs> you know, these city dwellers, I, I don't think they understand anything. I, I don't know. I mean, if you don't believe the Bible and you don't understand farming, uh, what, <laughs> what you're going to teach this weird stuff. And, I mean, really weird. Yeah, you're, are you going to tell me that glorified people in their glorified bodies living amongst people that are not in the glorified body that's not weird so you're let's say you're in a you know, glorified body and, and then you got you're living amongst all these perverts that are sinners and they're going to die first of all what was the point of Jesus coming back and what's he got to do? He got to come back again. Well, where does he go? I mean, the whole thing does not make any sense at all. It's like you're these guys are teaching a whole different religion, completely separate from the Bible. The harvest is the end of the world. So we go here in Matthew 24. We see the great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. That's we read this also in 1 Corinthians 15. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We shall all be changed. No, Alan Parr says that the Bible's lying to you. The Bible's lying to you and that we're not all going to be changed. Well, if you're not changed, you're going to be burned, right? I mean, the only people that are going to be changed into the incorruptible body is the believer those of us that are born of the Spirit of God there are not gonna be saved people that are not changed and all the unsaved people they don't get any more chances buddy they don't get a thousand year extension all right I, I mean it's just weird Let's go to one more. Uh, let's well, we might go to two more, but let's go here because I, I want to show you something here. Oops. Let's see. You remember at the last trump here, we read, you know, the great sound of a trumpet. At the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, right? Well, here in First Thessalonians four, it also talks about. Um, you know, the, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. This is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall, be, shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Remember, remember Alan Parr said that they're going to be the... We're going to be lifted up into heaven and then set back down on earth. He himself said it. But he left. he's leaving out a portion of believers. <laughs> and what the Bible says over and over, God is not a respecter of persons. So why would some people be changed into the glorified bodies and others not? Well, the only way you can make that claim is if you're gonna preach some goofy doctrine that's not supported by the Bible at all you know, I think I think I really do think people watch too many Hollywood movies I honestly believe that I think they're getting their Bible doctrine from Hollywood movies that's what I think and so when they see a movie like Left Behind they think that's Bible stuff they're deceived. I mean, it's. I don't know how you could be so naive, really. 
there might be a different word I could use too, but naive for sure. To think that Hollywood would produce a movie that is in line with the Bible. I mean, that's all right. That's not, you know, that's that's dangerous, man. It's dangerous to believe a movie you see on TV. All right. Okay. So we'll go back up here. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Alright. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. We're going to be all caught up together, just like what 1 Corinthians 15 says, we shall all be changed. Alright, so and I guess we... Got to go to Revelation 20. Because this whole idea of a th Jesus reigning a thousand years is coming from Revelation 20. But then when you actually read Revelation 20, it never says Jesus reigns a thousand years. In fact, if you've read, if you get to there, you should have gotten, you should have already read, for example, um, Luke chapter 1 and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever how long? forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end so that right there that disqualifies any notion of any idea of a thousand year reign alright and so if you actually read Revelation 20, it does not say Jesus reigns a thousand years. Alright, take a look. Read it for yourself. It says, they, meaning us that are saved, live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Alright. And they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years years if we suffer we shall reign with him all right so let's go to oh I'm not sure if I'm in the right place here I'm not where am I at here oh I know I really don't know I'm making this up here oh where are we at doggone it what am I looking for? Oh, I know. I'm sorry. I apologize. Oops. I think I was right the first time, wasn't I? Okay. Uh, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus. All right, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, which in time past were not the people of God, but are now the people of God. Right now, we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are the people of God. All right, I mean, we are a royal priesthood, Right, and we read in Revelation chapter 1 <laughs> we are kings and priests unto God right now he has made us kings and priests right now we are a royal priesthood anybody catching that right now we are priests of God and of Christ we are called to preach the gospel to every creature we are priests of God and of Christ I mean I, really, it's in the Bible so often, it, I cannot help but wonder, do these guys ever read the Bible? I mean, have they ever read it? How could you read the Bible and just never see it, man? I can understand a, a new believer, but somebody that reads, you know, every day, I don't know how you miss it. I don't know how you don't see it. I really don't. Unless you don't believe the Bible that you're reading. I mean, that's the only thing. 
If you don't actually believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, how are you going to understand anything? And so when these guys, they preach from the NLT, they don't believe the NLT is from God. They believe it's a translation of a mysterious book that nobody can find. That does not exist. So they don't believe the book they, they hold. They don't believe in this mysterious book. They, they just believe that they can make up whatever they want. And I'm telling you, that's what they do. Now, if you read this, for example, Exodus 19, verse 6, and you believe that's from God with all your heart, and God says, Ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. The children of Israel was a kingdom of priests. The children of Israel was a holy nation. And so now, today, we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are a kingdom of priests. We are a royal priesthood and a an holy nation. And so when we read Revelation 20, and it says, They shall be priest of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years that can only mean right now and it's it would make perfect sense too and it does make perfect sense because what's happening right now is not going to happen forever just as it's explained all throughout the Bible there's coming an end of this wicked world and just as God has given his people a way out of the wickedness and evilness of Egypt and, and Moses led them out of it so also has God given us a way out of this wicked world and it's through Jesus Christ all right so if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved, right? You'll be born of the Spirit of God, and we will be delivered from this wicked world. And what's Jesus say? Uh, um, let me see if I can find something here. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace, and the world ye shall tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Maybe people haven't gotten that far yet in the Bible, but I'm telling you, it's all right here. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So when we are born of the Spirit of God, we have overcome the world because He has overcome the world in fact ye are of God little children and have overcome them yeah, there's something else in here there? for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God All right. that's it right so this world's coming to an end just as Jesus says, when it comes to an end, behold, he cometh with clouds. He's up in the air. And just like Alan Parr said, we're going to be lifted up into the air. Right? And so when we're up in the air, that's when Satan is loosed. And he goes out to deceive the nations, to gather them at our feet. All right, this goes all the way back to Genesis 3, verse 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And in Psalm 110, Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Right, in Revelation 3, verse 9, it says, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. So here also in Revelation 20, the enemy is gathered at our feet. 
when we are up in the air, a fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. And this is parallel with Matthew 13. The harvest is the end of the world. Right? And as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. I mean, it's it, you. It's all connected, man. Just got to connect the dots. It's not complicated. You know, what's complicated is this goofy idea when well, you got to glorify bodies living with perverts and, and other stuff. Right? I mean, really. So, let's say there's a saint. Um, you're in your glorified body, and here is a saint that is still in this flesh. All right, like we are right now. All right, you guys are sitting there playing Nintendo or whatever, you know, kids do. Now, your buddy, who's not in his glorified body, just has a heart attack and dies. Wow. You tell me that's not going to be painful? You tell me that's, that's not going to hurt? You tell me that there's going to be no sorrow? You're living amongst these people that are going to die? And you're going to tell me, yeah, we ain't going to care. I mean, what's going on here? I, I don't care. I don't care. If, if somebody that I know, I don't, you know, if they're saved and that's great and all that, I still don't want them to die. It's still painful to see that person go through that pain. It hurts me to see others hurt. And you know, it hurts God to see us hurt. And so, at the end of the world, God is going to do away with all of that. And the end of the world is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. There's not going to be this goofy crap right here. Guarantee it. So the end of the world is not the end of the world. And the experts and the scholars say this and that. I mean, really. This is insanity, man. This is like a whole nother religion. Like a religion of make-believe. You just make up whatever you want and we'll call it the Bible. And we'll just ignore what the Bible says. It's unbelievable. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, I mean, I, I've showed guys that they get this stuff wrong, but there ain't nobody that gets every single point wrong more than this guy that I've witnessed. And of course, he's super popular. When you're making stuff up like that, you're gonna be popular when you tell the truth nobody cares. That's just the world that we live in.